Well, NASA pictures, uh, thermal uh, images showed those, those sorts of temperatures in the basement. Would you send them to me? Okay. My name is Mark, and I'm the individual who was questioning Dr. Gross, and he asked me to email to him those thermal images. When I approached him after his talk to get his email address for that purpose, he refused to provide it to me. I think this is important because it reveals the attitude of the NIST investigators, which is one of willful ignorance of what really happened on 9-11. Molten metal exceeding 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm curious about uh, the, uh, the pool of molten steel that was found in the bottom of the, of the towers. Um, I, I am too. And <laughs> just tell me about it. Have you, have you seen it? Well, I, not personally, but eyewitnesses there found huge poles of molten steel beneath the towers, and uh, scientists, some scientists don't think that the uh, collapse of the building could have melt, melted all that steel. Um, first of all, let's go back to your basic uh, premise that there was uh, a pool of molten, molten steel. Um, I know of absolutely nobody, and there's no eyewitness who said so, nobody who's produced it. Uh, I was on the site, I was on the steel yards, so I can't, I don't know that that's so. You'd get down below and you'd see molten steel, molten steel running down the channel rails, like you're in a foundry. Lava. Like, like, like lava, lava from a volcano. Underground, it was still so hot that molten metal dripped down the sides of a wall from Building 6. However, they do hit hot spots occasionally, and everything stops. There were fires of 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit below the ground. I can't, I don't know that that's so. There's uh, a video of it. around 2,600 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, I think it's probably pretty difficult to get that kind of uh, uh, temperatures in a... Um, uh, in fire. Well, NASA pictures, uh, thermal uh, images showed those, those sorts of temperatures in the basement. Would you send them to me? Okay. Biggest things. Out, still on the rubble, it's still, uh, I believe, 1,100 degrees. The guy's boots just melt within a few hours. This is how it's been since day one. Oh, it's unbelievable. And this is six weeks later, almost six weeks later. And as we get closer to the center of this, it gets hotter and hotter. It's probably 1,500 degrees. We've had some small windows into um, what we thought was the core at some point, and it looked like a, uh, an oven. You know, it was just roaring inside. And it was just a bright, bright reddish-orange color. NASA and the U.S. Geological Survey created this thermal map of the temperature of the rubble. This map was created five days after the towers were attacked. Obviously, the rubble would be cooler after five days than it was on September 11th. Also, firemen sprayed water on the rubble during those five days. However, one location in the rubble of Building 7 was above the melting point of aluminum, and so was one location in the rubble of the South Tower. Not surprisingly, smoke came out of the rubble for months. Peter Tully, president of one company hired to remove debris, and Mark Lazeau, president of Controlled Demolition, told the American Free Press that steel had melted at the bottom of the basements in the towers and Building 7. These incredible temperatures are more evidence that explosives were used. The explosives in the basements had to be powerful to break apart the massive steel beams. Explosives create very high temperatures, and the heat had nowhere to go since it was deep underground. We next enter a room containing a form that's difficult to describe. In any other museum, it could be passed off as a meteorite. And while this was born of intense heat, this is altogether different. This formation is really four separate stories of the World Trade Center, compressed, compacted, incinerated, exposed to temperatures as hot as the inner Earth. I never knew this existed. On it, you can see the typeface from printer paper, which was exposed to so much heat, it carbonized. Is this your tomb of the unknowns? In some respects, it is unequivocal. After these, this is three floors of the World Trade Center, and everything in them, compressed and fused together into a slab about three feet thick. 
when those towers collapsed, remember the collapses began from the top. They did not begin from the bottom. And so when the floors began crashing down upon themselves, the air just simply looked for the path of least resistance. And generally that went straight out the window. The steel in dragon-like lengths and contortions spoke for itself. Bent, deformed, without cracks. I found it hard to believe that it actually bent because of the size of it and how there's no cracks in the iron. It bent without almost a single crack in it. It takes thousands of degrees to bend steel like this. Typically you'd have buckling and tearing on the tension side, but there's no buckling at all. Here is the meteorite, molten iron fused with concrete. And architects, engineers, people who work with steel, welders have just never seen the level of destruction and the level of deformation of this material in our lives. this rock-like object that has come to be known as the meteorite. This is fused element of, of steel, molten steel and concrete and all of these things all fused by the heat into one single element. Video tape, video tape, video tape, video tape.